Like, this sequence just screams to me, make sh you're gonna be leaving for a while. So, I feel like I shouldn't have unresolved quests. Wait, no. I, I hit the wrong button. But, here we go. This is where you will be staying. I'll leave you here, so please relax until dinner is served. I just swear, if I need to climb that tower right after having just climbed it... <laughs> this is quite a nice room. It has a certain atmosphere that you just don't find back in the city. It wasn't that expensive either. Hmm. What to do now? How about we relax until things get dark? I'd be more than happy to do just that. But is it really okay to take it easy? Rest when you can. That's part of a bracer's job, too. This is our free time, so let's enjoy a meal, take a stroll, do something like that. Fishing? Fishing time? Wow, what a picturesque view. The entire lake looks like it's glowing. Too bad we can't see the royal city on the other side. But from here it's easy to tell that this is the biggest lake in the kingdom. This lake is just like a fisher's dream come true. I bet it'd be a blast to throw a line in those waters. Yes! There's a book I've been meaning to read, so maybe I'll just sit back and relax. Then boys are Estelle. Estelle. Estelle? I actually quite like how the characters in this game all sort of defy common stereotypes, but I could honestly do without constantly pointing it out to each other. It gets a little, it's, it, that particular aspect is getting a little bit old. Do you need this beer? Surely, uh, hmm. So, like, I don't have a fishing rod item or anything. Um... Okay, I kind of love that, but also, like, what am what am I doing? I don't I don't have a fishing rod, do I? It appears that I do not. So I can go out here. There's no icon above my head. There's no scene that's taking place. Maybe over here? No, not this one either. I'm confused. I'm not I'm I'm not really sure what I'm doing. <laughs> Maybe I need to go get a fishing rod. Sounds good. Oh hey. Charizard and Olivia are having a drink of chilled fruit wine together. No matter how light the liquor is, drinking too much is bad for your health, right? Don't worry, this stuff is just like water. Estelle, sometimes we all need to take a breather. I understand your concern for Shara, but you can leave her to me. Uh... You know, that's actually fair. By the way, 
Hey Estelle, what happened to Joshua? I invited him to come fishing, but he brushed me off for a book. Don't you think that's a little cold-hearted? <laughs> yes! Isn't that what I'm doing? Do I need to, like, find someone to lend me a fishing rod? Yes, let's. No fishing rod, eh? How about... no? Nope. How about... this is the room I'm staying in. Uh... I certainly need to borrow a fishing rod. But from whom? Aren't you going to fish? You're not so bad yourself, you know? Just not as good as you. I think I'll just sit here and watch. Okay, now it's letting me do it. I was trying to borrow one before! I don't know why I didn't show up the icon above my head before, though. That was a little frustrating. Yes, of course we do. It's right over here, and they're free to use for anyone lodging here. Progressive Rod. All right then, I'll put it to good use. Please enjoy yourself. Uh, a normal fishing pole which can be found anywhere. So it says. Estelle. It's fish is in the shadow, so it's hiding. If it's in the sun, it's going to be looking for food, and, but also probably be more energetic, I think. I don't know. I'm not much of a, fi of a fisher. TBH. Holy boots? <laughs> Oh, 
let's try that again. <laughs> A lure should actually work well in the light, right? I think? I think that makes sense? Look, I don't know. Oh, we got another cart. I haven't gotten anything really nice, though. Actually, I didn't want to change. I was... Uh, I'm happy with the sun. Okay, let's try this again and see if it changes what I get. Okay, that's exactly the same thing. Hmm, interesting. We'll still use live bait. We'll still do the same spot, but we will try reeling it in differently. And see how that changes the result. I haven't used fly at all. Hmm. Okay, you know, I'm curious. I. My gut feeling is that this is a bad fishing spot. But we'll try it. Salmon. Okay, you know what? I'm actually happy to stop there. For now. Oh, he's gone? Hmm. Hundred Days War. Where indeed? Ahem. <laughs> the Hundred Days War. Outbreak of War. In spring 1192, the Septium of the Septium Calendar, a single cannon shot shook the Hacken Gate situated on the north part of the Liberal Kingdom. This marked the beginning of an invasion later known as the Hundred Days War, and the moment in which the raging Golden Stallion assailed the noble White Falcon. During this time, the Hacking Gate was little more than a reinforced midi rampart. It easily succumbed to the rounds of fire by one of the Empire's Renford Company-built orbital tanks, leaving a section of the aged barrier fractured beyond repair. As the Liberal Kingdom's other defensive walls were hit in succession by a full assade of cannonballs, they too fell under the explosive impact and were reduced to a mountain of rubble. At about the same time as the first cannon shot was fired, a single letter from the Ar Arabonian embassy located in the royal city was delivered to Queen Alicia. More specifically, it was a writ containing a declaration of war by the Arabonian Empire upon the kingdom. In, diplomatic, in terms of diplomatic wisdom, the propriety of the declaration was established by being handled prior to the preemptive strike. Uh, 
But in this instance, there was hardly a difference in time between the when the two occurred. In short, firing the first shot at the exact moment war was declared on the Liberal Kingdom made it possible for the Empire to guise their preemptive strike as one of legitimacy when the first bombshell hit. They could be referred to as a new this could be referred to as a new diplomatic war tactic, though one incapable of being employed without a meticulous level of planning, used in concern with an orbital communication system. Blitz Tactics After the destruction of the Hacking Gate, the Imperial Army began its invasion in earnest. Overall, its troops' strength was made out of 13 divisional units. This proved to be roughly half of the Empire's entire military force, and was such a massive deployment that it exceeded three times that of the Liberals' entire royal army. Within a month of the outbreak of the war, the Imperial Army had occupied nearly all of Liberal territory. Only Grantsil and Laystone Fortress, situated just off the shore of Valyria Lake, remained in opposition. So rapidly were these blitz tactics carried out that even the Calvard Republic, an ally of the kingdom and longtime rival of the Empire, never had had the opportunity to dispatch auxiliary forces to aid their ally. However, in a following attempt by the Imperial Army to take direct control over the Central Factory and Malga Mine, they instead found themselves on the verge of being forced to surrender by Queen Alicia, who remained entrenched within the royal city. Two months following the outbreak of war, the battle situation was altered in a way which no one could have previously anticipated. Unbeknownst to the Erebonian army, Three patrol ships were quietly being developed behind the walls of Laystown Fortress. Upon completion, they were put under the direction of veteran commander General Morgan, and a large-scale counterattack was launched. These patrol ships, shielded by armor far superior to the tanks of the Imperial Hills, and mounted with a substantial amount of high-performance orbital weaponry, had also managed to boost their speed to over 1,800 sledge per hour. These crafts and independent mobile force lauded as the elite of elite. Liberals' forces with these crafts. <laughs> Liberals' forces mounted an attack and quickly reca recaptured the checkpoints connecting the various regions. As this strike was underway, they simultaneously launched an amphibious attack from least in fortress and one by one defeated the remaining isolated imperial divisions. After just three months following the outbreak of war, the larger part of the imperial army's remaining divisions finally surrendered. However, as capitulation was at hand, there were indications of a surge of further reinforcements from the imperial homeland, a move which galvanized other continental nations to follow suit and join the Calvert Republic in support. Together, they lambasted the Empire, and a formidable group of allies began to materialize. Amidst all of the chaos, the Septian Church, in cooperation with the Bracers Guild, called for an armistice, and after approximately 100 days from the start of hostilities, the war came to an end. In the following year of 1193, the Herb Royal Villa on the outskirts of the royal city, in the villa, <clears throat> a peace treaty was signed by both the army and er, both the liberal and Erbonian sides. Although no indemnification was made, an official policy, apology was offered up by the imperial government as they expressed that they had made a grievous error attributed to a tragic incident occurring within their borders. Hmm. Interesting. 